What is up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? It's Paul from Ron Apple Fan here, and I thought I would talk to you a little bit about graphics cards because that's what I like to talk about. I thought I talk about the specifics about a leak about Navi 10 at Navi 21. Navi 10. This is Navi 10, right? And as with every iteration of Navi, what we're tending to see now, a, a trend is starting to appear at, from the ether. We're starting to get more, uh, you know knowledge about how AMD wants to chop this GPU and it's kind of interesting. So if you look at what they're going to do with the Oryx 5600 XT, they're going to take uh, this, the, the, the 5700, they're going to keep the amount of shaders, they're going to quarter the memory memory bus, limiting it that way and dropping clock speeds down. AMD are not afraid to drop clock speeds now in order to uh, enable a different sector of the market, which is usually you know, they all tended to run the same around clock speed, but they just cut down the die. They're all so you can see with the, the 5500 XT, they've more or less halved uh, Navi 10. So it's 24 compute units, the full Navi uh, 14 die, rather than um, 40 compute units. But they've also halved the memory structure as well. So that's the way they're chopping and changing that. They're halving it. There's also rumors of a, of a Navi 10 die, which is going to be Navi 12 with HBM support for, for Apple and all that kind of stuff. We shall see if that's true. Um, but there's another big rumor that came out pretty much today. And it's talking about um, doubling of the Navi 10 die for Navi 21. Now it seems relatively, uh, you know, self-explanatory what kind of performance you'd get if you doubled, I'm sorry, if you doubled this card, hopefully you're still working, um, if you double that card, where, where your performance would lie. I find the article very interesting because of the stuff that he, he doesn't want to say. It's almost like he's afraid to, to upset people. I'll bring you over and I'll show you the article, I'll show you some of the rhetoric I'm talking about, right? So if we go over to the article and I can share my screen, here we are with the article. Now, the article say, states very clearly, is like, you know, talking about how many billions of transistors. This is really inaccurate. I don't know why this number is here. It's very easy to figure out what, what a 500 and, uh, 505 millimeter squared Navi die would be. You just double the amount of transistors in Navi 10, which is 20, 20, 20 about 20 billion, 20.6 billion transistors. So you can see, say, in 15 to 16 billion, which is the same as the 2080 Ti. In fact, Navi, if, if this is true, Navi would have double uh, double the amount of transistor that's in Navi 10. So it would be, um, you know, in a uh, 275 to 300 watts. Yeah, he's talking about all that. Uh, you know, look, coming close to an R, uh, you know, a, so Navi 21 GPU could be could exceed the 2080 Super's performance and even come up close to the 2080 Ti. Now it will beat the 2080 Ti because let's talk about something I wanted to show you in this video before we go on. Here is a GTX 1080, right? GTX 1080. It has uh, 2,560 shaders. It is exactly half of this card, right? But the thing you have to remember is that the Titan V is in fact the fastest gaming graphics card in the world. Here it is here. It's just not designed for gaming graphics. It's designed for deep learning and all that kind of stuff. It is in fact the fastest gaming graphics card. 815 millimeters squared. It's the first GPU made. On Everybody forgets this existed. Uh, you know. It's the first uh, graphics card designed on a 12 nanometer process. It's got 12 gigabytes of HBM um, running at 651 gigabytes per second, which is crazy, crazy band bandwidth. Not as big as uh, Radeon 7, but still bloody good at that. Now, what people don't, don't tend to realize is this. This is the problem with this card. The clock speed. It ran a 1455 megahertz boost. If you look at the 1080, right? The 1080 ran at 1733 megahertz boost and more likely ran around 18, 1900 megahertz with the stock cooler and could be up to 2000 megahertz with a decent cooler. So what really hampered Volta was uh, not, it, look, this can't do RT, this doesn't have RT cores. It can do ray tracing somewhat. It has tensor cores, but it, it can't really, but you look at, look at the, look at 14.9 T flops of compute performance. Now, if you take this, right? So 14.9. So if you take 5,100 and I can't remember, is it 5,120? 5, I think it is. I'm just looking for the number here. We're, yeah, 5,120. And if you want to find out a T flop number times two times 
uh, clock speed. So let's say if it, if it did Pascal numbers of clock speed, let's say 1900 megahertz for conservative, it, that's 19.4 T-flops of performance in in the titan graphics card right people forget about this this card if it ran at 1900 megahertz i don't know whether it's possible for this card to run at 1900 megahertz but it does a big thing with nvidia and wanting to keep this 250 watt tdp they tend to like to limit their cards at that and if you don't believe me go to the 2080 ti and you'll see the 2080 ti also has a 250 watt tdp right it's a smaller die it has 18.6 billion transistors less transistors then then uh the the volta card because it has less shaders only has four four thousand three hundred and fifty six and it's not the full die the full die in fact is the 18.6 billion transistors is more like the titan uh rtx or the 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 quadro cards and they have uh four thousand six hundred and something shaders so four thousand six hundred is the full die um, but you can see that uh, once again Nvidia have limited their die by limiting the watts that it's allowed to draw this draw apparently this die with with almost a thousand less shaders draws 250 watts and and you know this die with uh, a thousand more shaders draws how much is it 250 watts this is a thing key consideration you have to understand with nvidia nvidia don't have any graphics cards to beat nvidia don't have to clock graphics cards to beat specific SKUs. they can do that when when necessary but right now they don't so they tend to like make their cards look efficient by dropping their wattage in fact this card would be the 2080 ti would be a monster if it was unlocked if it ran at 300 watts and it was just let go and ran at 2100 megahertz and all that kind of shit, it would absolutely annihilate everything. It would be, instead of being 30% faster than the 2080, it would have been 60%, 50% faster than 2080. They just limited it. This is what they do. But at the same time, this is the fastest graphics card ever launched. This is it here, right? 5,120 shaders. Yes, it can't do RTX as well as the the the, the uh, touring stuff, but this is in in fact it's got it's got a better better memory. So you can overclock this memory, probably get up to 750 megahertz. You could you could change the way it's designed, uh, give it more stacks, 16 gigabyte stacks, and you could you could have a, a, a essentially a, a one terabyte terabyte per second uh, bandwidth. You could do all sorts of things with this interesting die here with HBM. But to, to say all that, this is the more advanced graphics card, except for the RT functions. It, it clearly is. It's got more shaders, got more transistors, got everything else. Now, it is a bigger die as well, and that's the reason why we don't see it, because it's a bigger die, which means its yields are probably terrible. That's why we don't see it. And they, they, I think this retailed for three grand or something. Yeah, $2,999. Now, if you look at the RX 5700 50, XT, this is, by the way, this is all inferring stuff that we're, we already know to try and get to the root of, of, of is this leak even viable, right? Is this leak even viable? And and I, I, I don't know. We shall see. Um, I think 505 millimeter squared is too big for AMD right now. Uh, but who's to say it's not too big in a year's time for AMD, especially on the... But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of things that, that kind of didn't make sense to me um, when we look at this. So if you look at this 251 millimeter square, that's the front end. That's the, 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 the rasterizers, everything. That's all... The entire die is 251 millimeter squared. Memory bus, everything included. So if you double that, so if you 251 millimeter square, 251 millimeter squared times two... What do you get? You get uh, 502 millimeter squared. Now the leak says 505 millimeter squared, right? Which is fine, right? That's fine. So 250 millimeter squared, as I said, 10.3 billion transistors. Well, this wants to talk about uh, it having 15 to, could exceed 15 to 16 billion transistors. Well, I, I say, well, if it's double, well, then it's going to be double. But what, what, what we tend to forget is that we know and we've seen from AMD's own slides that, um, you know, Navi, the new Navi stuff is going to be on the new process node. So it's going to be on 7 nanometer EUV and 7 nanometer EUV allows for about 10% better density, um, you know, uh, uh, so therefore it would either 251 millimeter squared would be smaller in die size or would be more dense, in other words, have more shaders. Um, and and what I the only thing I can think to explain that away is if there's some hardware baked in ray tracing stuff in there because as I said before and I was trying to show you this if you look at the size of this this is made the, by the way the 1080 is made on the same process as the Titan V right so Titan V is um, 815 millimeter squared 
the GTX 1080 is um, 314. So the reason why I picked the 1080 and I didn't pick the 1080 Ti is because it's very simple, right? We take the shader number of the 1080, right? And we go 2,500 and I think it's 60, is it? 2,560 times two equals 520, uh, 5,120. What does this have? 5,120. Now if we take the die area of three, ooh, calculator. Uh, the die area of uh, 314, um, 314, is it 314? 314. Now, granted, they're using different memory subsystems, using different uh, times two. It still doesn't even bring it close to the to the Titans. Uh, 815 millimeter squared. So the reason why I use that is because I wanted to highlight the differences in architecture from um, you know uh, Volta to Pascal. Volta has 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 int shaders as well as um, a, you know standard rasterite shader, shaders. It has uh, 64 SMs per uh, 64 compute uh, 64 what do NVIDIA call them? CUDA cores, poor SM. And it has 64 sh in shaders, poor SM. So allowing it, that, that, that having those in shaders adds to the amount of transistors you need on a die. Not only that, having those tensor cores adds to the amount of transistors you need on a die. That's why it's 815 millimeter squared rather than 630 something or 628 millimeter squared. Because that's how big, if you just doubled the 1080 to bring out a new fantastic graphics card, that's how much it, that's how big it would be, be 600 and something millimeter squared. And, and and let's be honest, when we all talked about what the new graphics card would have been, we all thought that maybe that's what it would have been, that's what Turing would have been, just just an upgraded variant on, um, on Volta. And it wasn't. It was it, They added these new things called RT cores, and they kind of scaled down the, the size of the die as well to make it more um, you know, economical for NVIDIA to launch those cards. It, it, it's interesting. But what I'm saying here is that the, the couple, of, a couple of red flags in that article for me was, um, you know, uh, if you look at if you look at the article, number one, the guy is trying to be, um, and I use WCCF Tech for a lot of my information. I use a lot of other sites as well. I just I just tend to like to see uh, WCCF Tech tends to be one of the first ones to come out with stuff, and I try tend to go, well, is there any truth to this, or is there not any truth to this? And that, that's what I I, I I like. I know people out there are going to see this, and it's going to be reported in other ones. And I wanted to kind of poke holes in it a bit because it sounds too good to be true. Number one, he's saying fifteen to sixteen billion transistors, and and that's his inference. That's not the actual leaks inference. That's his inference. And um, yeah, it's going to be twenty billion. If it's going to be that size, it's going to be twenty billion. And um, not only that, um. It, it it will be beating a 20 if, if you in amd make a card that big and i'm not for one second saying they're going to do that i don't know whether they're going to do that i don't know whether i believe that they're going to do that that's kind of strange to me that they do that big i thought maybe 64 compute units maybe 50s because we know the console do we know the xbox like we know the Xbox. I'm going to do a, a total video on, on, on Xbox and PlayStation. But we know the Xbox uh, Series X, that big one, uh, is going to have 12 teraflops of compute performance. And if you kind of do the math, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get around 56 compute units. So we know there's a 56 compute unit design out there. Um, so I thought maybe 56 and 64 for another ramp up. Maybe that maybe that's still coming, and maybe this thing is even further down the line. I don't know, but I thought that's maybe what we would have seen with the new card. And you can see very much how in how amd want to chop these things so it starts to make sense because you're looking at double that's just double it's two times navi 10 like so navi uh 14 half of um half of this guy okay then what is uh, you know uh what is this going to be compared to uh navi 21 well it's going to be half of navi 21 it, it would make sense that that, it would, that that's the way it would be it would make sense that that's the kind of die they're going to use um you know a 505 millimeter squared die sounds very big for me for amd but it uh, and then you kind of go well well they're supposed to be saving 10 percent, so it should be 50 millimeter smaller but then 50 millimeter squared smaller but then you're like but wait a minute no not 50 minutes but 25 millimeter squared as well but like you're looking at that and you're going uh but maybe they need the extra area for 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 the their their baked in ray tracing because the navi the rdna 2.0 which i would imagine what navi 21 is is going to be the variant that brings ray tracing so you're going to need extra die area very much like i showed you the touring die needs more die area now we don't know how much die area amd's uh, implementation will need um 
but that leak as i said there's nothing really interesting in it other than uh, it just says it looks like uh, amd's high-end uh, rx fit navi 21 gpu specifications have have started to leak out with reports from the far east claiming that the next generation see from china and stuff you, know, you never know how how reliable these are next generation uh, gpu could be twice as fast as navi 10 according to folks over at reddit this is from reddit as well so this is even big take it a bigger grain of salt uh, a high-end navi gpu has been taped out and is headed for launch next year in 2020 not sure uh, i like that either and um, details were posted in taiwanese forums blah 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 blah, blah, blah. Uh, the rumor states that the high-end Navi GPU, which is refer this, just seems like like five hundred and five, uh, seems like a number that's too exact to be plucked out of the air, but also it seems like a number that anybody with a calculator could have went at uh, two hundred and fifty-one times two and got five hundred and two. So. I would have said that if, if 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 somebody was trying to make this look relevant, they'd say five hundred and two millimeter squared, right? But it that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing five hundred and five millimeter, which is twice as big as Navi ten, which is true. Which is a, a die of two hundred fifty one millimeter squared. Yes, it's true. Uh, this uh, is even bigger than AMD's Vega twenty, which is only three hundred and thirty one millimeter squared. So this is true as well. So it's it, it could mean that uh, we could be looking at a powerhouse of a chip. Blah 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 blah. Uh, the Vega 20 GPU has 13.2 billion transistors. Yes, yes. And and what I, what I would find interesting is, right, if you had this, you would have exactly the same 520, uh, you know, shaders times two times, let's say, what's the current uh, game clock? 1750. So you could have a, 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 almost an 18 teraflop graphics card. So if you want to talk about where NVIDIA and AMD sit in terms of teraflops, if you go and you get the 5700 XT, it's T flop number is 9.7. And if you take the 2070 Super, where's the 2070 Super? 2070 Super is at 9.9.0 9 teraflops. So in AMD, you have a set 0.7% more higher teraflops on their graphics card, but Nvidia is about 8% slow, 8% faster. So uh, yeah, like the the 2080 to 2080 Ti is around 13.4 teraflops so that would tell you that yes if if amd is is going to make an 18 teraflop graphics card 100 percent going to make an 18 for 18 teraflop graphics card and as me plucking shit out of the air like they, this thing could have a, a 14 megahertz clock speed because they can't because because the thermal envelope remember everybody's forgetting that this card here has a 225 watt tdp and it's running with a 512 bit bus or sorry 256 bit bus and you know a, a 200 51 millimeter square die you double that you could be talking with something that draws 500 watts 440 you know what I mean? you could be talking about that now i would imagine that you would have some efficiencies brought in like you know the new rdna architecture is probably you got you got 20 percent saving i think from going to the to the euv lithography you've got other things that can save you uh, area and space and things and one of the big ones would be dropping clock speed down because as i've showed in my latest underholding video you can take a 5500 XT from requiring an 8 pin power connector to requiring no power connector with undervolting and very and losing very very little uh, performance so if you if you're talking about something that you want to just clock a 1400 megahertz and let it go yeah, but then you're dropping the T flop number down to something like sixteen T flops, and still that's 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 enough to come to to beat a twenty eighty Ti. It's like it's just enough. Um, and and I think I have a sneaking suspicion that this card is memory bottlenecked. I have a sneaking suspicion. So if you got something with, uh, you know, you could even do twelve gigabytes of, of RAM on this with a three hundred and whatever bit bus. Yeah, that's possible. I don't like the twelve gigabyte number. I'd like to see the eight, the eight, the, the sixteen gigabyte number. But I also know that AMD are open to the idea of six gigabytes now because of the, the RX fifty six hundred XT. But yeah, that that like that's pretty much all of the leak. And I just thought I would I would talk about it in a way that would would try and concisely bring about what actually could be there because is there any relevance to it and there's some things that say relevant to me and there's some things that say bull bullshit to me but the main one is that that 505 millimeter squared die first of all initially i was like i was like well it's going to be on seven anime euv so why is it not smaller it should be smaller and then i was like well maybe ray tracing stuff is in it and then i was like well the number itself 505 
it doesn't seem like it, like like if you plucked one out of your arse, you'd be saying five hundred and two, really, wouldn't you? Or you'd be saying you know whatever. Uh, for me, uh, it seems a bit radical to suggest that they're going to double this die. It seems so bananas that it nearly seems true. Like like we we all remember, uh, you know, um, if you remember when GCN launched, when GCN launched, uh, you know, uh, the seven nine seventy had uh, a variant called the 7870 and that was like a low end like kind of weak uh card and the next generation up from it was fury and it just doubled everything it just literally they took that card and doubled it went from 2000 shaders to fucking 4000 whatever shaders and, and it, it doesn't go so far to 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 kind of go well maybe maybe amd still have that in their locker maybe they will just go because i've been saying for ages if you're going to be if you, you either have to be the fastest or you have to be first to the party and it helps to be doing both of them and the video tend to do both of them so if you're going to be competitive in the high end what you need to do is be the fastest the fastest and the first to the market if you're fastest and first to the market you can charge whatever you want and uh, you know do i do i agree with the prices of graphics cards nowadays absolutely not they're fucking insane and the only thing that will change that is if amd begin to get their finger out and compete at the high end now i happen to think that they, they've they've lost both companies lost any interest in competing with each other i, I don't really i really find it like in another world you'd be calling it conspiracy theories like you would but it, it's they they tend to try and slot their cards into sections where the other guy doesn't compete like you know what i mean like yes it's fa like the 5500 xc yes it's faster than a 1650 super but it's also more expensive and yes it's slower than a than a 1660 super but it's it's also less expensive so they're they're fighting over 17 dollars or 18 dollars and 19 dollar price slots that's what they're doing you know what i mean like yes this is slower than a super but it's 100 quid cheaper but yet it's faster than a than a 2060 super but it's the same price. I mean, like yes, the you know the 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 thirty seven hundred the the RTX twenty uh twenty sixty is is they only tend to compete on price where we're, Nvidia only tends to compete on price with AMD where they have ray tracing and other than that they they don't and it's just like they're slotting into each other's slots. It's weird. It's a weird 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 way of pricing your graphics cards. But at the same time, in saying that, I don't think Nvidia could stand for not being the fastest. So if uh, if AMD came out with this card, they will be the fastest. If they come out before Nvidia launch something new, they will absolutely be the fastest. They will one hundred percent take the performance crowd. And if you can't see that, well, then your 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 bl your blinkers on because this is a twenty billion transistor graphics card and very much and it's going to run at a at a decent clock speed. Like so. Excuse me, if you look at Volta, as I said before, Volta, it, if you clock Volta up high enough, it will, it, it already beats a 2080 Ti. And if you clock Volta up even higher, it, it would be smacking the shit out of, of out of uh, touring. So if you, if AMD can, can, can pull off that miracle as well, and AMD are pretty much IPC, IPC, IPC for IPC with, with, with Nvidia's cards now, they're pretty much in the same range, like they perform in and around where, where each other perform. The reason why those T, T flop numbers are skewed is because Nvidia quotes lower boost clocks, but they tend to do higher clock boost clocks, so they tend to, on average clock speed tends to be a bit higher on Nvidia cards, but in and around, yeah. So if you're talking about, will AMD do this? It's the only way they can take the performance crown, in my opinion. Like genuinely, like if 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 you're gonna do it, you need to do it now, and you need to do it as sooner rather than later. And I, but what I will say is, I don't see them doing it because I don't see AMD's supply constraints with TSMC allowing them to do that. I don't see them. Well, this would be a very small uh, volume product, I would imagine. Like because it, it just it, like it, a couple of couple of thousand units. 15 20 000 units like they wouldn't sell an awful lot of them but if they're selling them on a grand do you know what i mean then it starts to become compelling to them just to kind of get their name out there get get their get their uh get you know be known as the fastest there's nearly there's nearly something to be said about paper launching something that that actually competes with why is this moving stop you moving um that actually competes with nvidia and maybe beats nvidia uh, but you, you, it's not really a product for set. Like they did it with Radeon Seven. That was that was just get rid of a few, if a few uh, defective Mi Fifties that we have lying around, and get rid of a bit of silicon that would have just gone in the bin anyway. 
that's what Radeon 7 was. They were probably making a small loss on each one of them, but they would have been making a bigger loss if they didn't fucking sell them in a, in, at all. So just get rid of inventory kind of thing. Um, so and also Navi was late so they had to do that so if they're going to launch this it needs to be early in early in next year it needs to be at least at least in the first quarter if they're going to do it after that there's no point in doing it because Nvidia will just uh, Nvidia will have what they have like Nvidia's next card is coming <laughs> it's going to come sooner than people think I think I think I think the only thing that's stopping Nvidia from launching that card is they're still top and as soon as they're not top anymore that card will be launched so AMD need about six months of being on top uh, just for this to be worthwhile. Look, what's the point in launching a card at a thousand quid? Like this card will be expensive because AMD are done with that. So if they double this, right? Double this, this 400 quid, it's going to double it, double the memory, double the, double the core size, double, they're going to at least double the price. This 400 quid is going to be 800 quid. So what's the point in launching an 800 quid card that eventually you're going to have to drop the price down to 600 or 500 or whatever you're going to have to launch, drop the lot when Nvidia dropped their new cards and all of a sudden this looks like yesterday's news. And that's what's going to happen. So anyway, look, I'm, that was me. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but if you disliked it, tell me why dislike it, can't fix it if I don't know what I did wrong and in the comments let me know what you think don't forget to like comment share and subscribe hit that bell notification do all of the uh sharing things because that helps me out the most and yeah tell me what you think of this leak do you think that amd are going to double this die do you think there's any any credence to the rumor that they're going to double that it's like 505 millimeter squared is not a huge die people like to think of it as like a huge not in this today's day and age right it used to even back in the day like the 20 the I remember the GTX 280 being 600 and something millimeter squared. The GTX 280, that's 2007 or 8. 600 and something millimeter squared. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that the 505 millimeter die isn't in AMD's wheelhouse. I just think that that's crazy for the 7 nanometer process in the current state of thing, 7 nanometer process and supply. Anyway, don't forget to do all those things that I told you to do before. Hit me up with a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you in the next one. I'm going to press this button, stop recording. Bye 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 bye. Oh, I have merch if you want to do that, or Patreon, PayPal. Bye 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 bye.